Animation is rarely easy, and one of the hardest moments is when you finally get a shot to go in a direction that you like, and then something goes wrong. And for a lot of people, that's when you go from step blocking to spline. Because it started off great. Maybe you planned out your shot, you figured out some video reference, you have some good acting choices, you've got some great dynamic poses, and you went through, you blocked out your animation, and you've got the foundation set, you hit play, and it's teleporting between all these great poses. Feels great, poses are good, everything's awesome, and then you switch from stepped to spline and everything just falls apart. Because now it feels like those poses aren't reading anymore. There's no timing to guide your eye. Everything's just moving all the time. All the punch and the energy and the zest of your shot is just gone. And it feels like you're basically starting over because you have to go and essentially reanimate the whole shot. And by the time you finish this process, what's supposed to be just splining, but it feels like redoing everything, your shot is working again, but is it ever as good as that original blocking pass? Because it kind of just feels like a different animation at this point. And if this sounds familiar or you can relate to any of this, then you know how frustrating it can be. But there is a solution to this problem, and the problem isn't that you suck or that you're a bad animator. In fact, you know how we know that you're not? It's because you liked something about that first blocking pass. Now think about it, in this workflow, your stepped blocking pass only consisted of your own manually created poses in a timeline full of your own timing decisions. Now, maybe you based those timing decisions off reference, maybe you came up with it yourself, maybe you didn't really think much about timing, it just kinda happened and you got lucky and you liked what it looked like, but either way, something about it was working. Otherwise, you wouldn't have moved forward to this next stage, to splining, and it was only when the computer took over and started interpolating everything, changing the timing, adding new in-between poses, and just creating all this extra motion that you didn't approve yet, that's why you started to hate the shot. You're not a bad animator, the computer is, and it's your job to make sure that the computer is doing as little animation as possible, that you're the one animating the shot, not your software. It's your choices, the dynamic and interesting poses that you put on screen, the quick timing and pauses that you put between those moments and the specific interesting choices that you have your characters make based on their thought processes that make your work memorable. It's what gets you hired. It's what a director wants you to bring to the table to help communicate their vision in your team's unified voice or style because they see that you're able to speak that same visual language despite the computer trying to mush and smooth everything together. So, where do we go wrong? Well, usually it comes down to two words. Blocking plus. This is the missing piece that's holding a lot of animators back, and animators who know about it but ignore it out of laziness are going to struggle more. I'm calling you out, because I've been there too. <laughs> in short, you just don't have enough keys in your timeline to hold things in place, and the computer is taking over the majority of the decisions across your timeline. If you have a 200 frame shot, and you only had, say, 20 keys to begin with, and that's your blocking, that means that as soon as you hit spline, the computer is now responsible for 90% of your shot. No wonder you don't like it. And to put it out there, I have an animation fundamentals class that goes into this process for different workflows, linked below for you to watch at your own pace, along with other courses for animators in Maya, Blender, Unreal Engine, and so on. But I've also partnered with Skillshare to create an entire series of classes using both Maya and Blender that specifically shows you how to plan, block, spline, and polish a shot from scratch while diving into Blocking Plus and how to do it properly for a couple of different workflows. I show both pose to pose and layered workflows and kind of dive into those too. And this isn't just like a couple of videos on the platform. I have like eight classes on Skillshare now as a part of the Skillshare original series. I even made worksheets and resources to help you identify poses from video reference and to make sure you actually nail this part of the process before moving forward. There's study hall classes that go into extra stuff like adding effects or lighting and a class on how to address feedback, whether it's a quick change, reworking a big chunk of your timeline, or having to take the whole shot in a new direction. And I specifically worked with Skillshare for these so that anybody can learn this stuff. Whether or not you can afford an expensive animation program or even just my personal courses, even though I try to make those more affordable, regardless, these are hopefully really accessible to everybody. Because Skillshare gives me a link to share a free 30-day access period across their entire library of classes, you can literally take all the classes that I make for free. And the first 500 people who click that link will be able to take advantage of that free 30-day period. So I have links down below for the 30-day period as well as links to all the classes. I hope it helps. Please check it out. Let me know what you think. Now, back to Blocking Plus. Let me give you an example of what usually happens and you tell me in the comments if this looks familiar. This is our reference, a relatively straightforward example of a simple mechanic shot. And if we analyze this reference to pull out our key poses or our golden poses or whatever you wanna call them, these are the poses that most of us are probably going to come away with. Now let's call this version one because this is what I'm gonna call sort of the student blocking, just the, the most obvious key poses. Now let's be generous with ourselves. Let's include some extra anticipations for impact, maybe a follow through and in between. So this is our version two. This is what most of us would find as our blocking as the storytelling poses that we need to tell the story of this shot. And if we just watch these poses in a pose-to-pose -pose stepped workflow, this is what we get. 
It's not bad, it feels pretty good. But if we check blocking off of our list and just move straight on to spline, let's see what this looks like. Immediately, it loses all of its flavor. It's just floaty, everything's always moving around. And if we had any less poses, like in our version one, for example, it'd be even worse. This is what it would have looked like without that second round of poses. You can also see with this backflip that we've got gimbal issues, the arms are doing weird stuff, and there's a lot to work through here. But we shouldn't move forward with these problems because we're just gonna have to redo all this work. Let's go back and add our blocking plus. Now in terms of identifying poses in reference and making sure we have everything we need, that's another video. But in short, this step is all about timing per body part. We're ultimately looking to preserve the contrast in our shot by allowing some part of the body to move quickly, to overshoot, to ease into a position, or to just slowly arrive somewhere at a different moment in a different direction than some other part of the body. All of this is what's gonna make our characters feel more alive, fluid, organic. It's the character's ability to move their body in a way where not everything has to move all at once, at one speed, in one direction, all stopping on the same frame. We need more overlapping action, more opposing action, more contrast in the timing and spacing of our performance. Now this could be as simple as just favoring an arm pose to stay in one position longer and then arrive quicker later. Or it could mean having a leg shift faster, planting a foot much sooner so that there's somewhere to actually shift all this weight in the hips later on. Usually it's a mix of both and that's really why we use reference to help us understand all these mechanics within our bodies. This is why we call it body mechanics. See how all these animation principles and all this animation terminology ties together? There's a reason we're supposed to build off this foundation of principles and body mechanics for our careers. But from here, every shot is different and you still wanna push poses, exaggerate timing, add more nuance, subtlety, and specificity to any character's performance. For example, how does your character sit in a chair? drink from a glass, throw a punch? And how does that change depending on their environment, their emotional state, or the style that you as the animator want to explore? Because a goofy goofball character, personality aside, is still gonna move differently in a semi-realistic world compared to a more stylized universe. But when it comes to your workflow and actually just doing the animation, no matter what you're doing, add more keys in the blocking stage to lock down the timing that you want from your character across the entire shot. It's not necessarily that you need keys on every single control on every single frame, but every frame on your timeline should have your fingerprint somewhere on it. And whether that's with keys on ones and twos, or if that just means you've influenced the tangents that span that range of frames, when people say every frame of Arcane is a masterpiece, they're right. They're right. But that's because artists literally touched every frame of that show. And in Arcane's case, that's actually true in more ways than is usually common. But ask yourself when you watch your splined or finished animation, if you had to pause on any random frame of the shot, in particular one that you didn't put something really important on, who was more responsible for what you see on that particular frame, you or the computer? Ask yourself, did you set that particular pose on the arms and the legs? Did you approve that? Did you adjust the timing or favor the position of the hips for that frame range? Do you know exactly which controls have been messed with to get that line of action from the spine through the neck? And if the answer is not yes to all of those, that's why it feels like you've lost control of your shot after hitting spline. You did. So take back control. Take a step back, go back to stepped, and make sure that you put enough information into your timeline with enough keys that when you let the computer help you, it doesn't change your shot, it doesn't take over, it just smooths things out a little bit. Subscribe for more animation videos, hit the thumbs up if you liked this, and please leave a comment if this video helped you out. Links below to my animation courses, the fundamentals, Maya and Unreal Engine classes for animators to name a few, and a link down below to try Skillshare for a month for free and to check out my animation classes that I put together with them. They're all Skillshare originals, which means that they're really fancy and well-produced thanks to their production team that I worked with here in New York. I'll put each one down there so you can check out the different trailers and the promo stuff so that you can actually see which ones are most helpful for you to dive deeper into this process with the full examples and resources that I have in those classes. Let me know your questions down below. Thanks so much for watching. I'm Sir Wade, and I'll see you in the next video.